Voices, a conversation about African Americans in Iowa, is a special presentation of I'll Make Me a World in Iowa. Hello, and welcome to Voices, a conversation about African Americans in Iowa. I'm Betty Andrews, Executive Director of I'll Make Me a World in Iowa, and your host for this program. For the next half hour, we want to focus on Iowa's African American community. What is the outlook for African Americans in Iowa? Today, key leaders from across the state come together to address achievements, history, culture, and challenges. Our choice for panelists was difficult because there are many leaders who could fit that bill. We chose, however, individuals from a variety of backgrounds in which I'm pleased to introduce. DiMaggio Nick Nichols, Noble Ford Mercury in Indianola. Reverend Keith A. Ratliff, Iowa, Nebraska, NAACP State Conference. Tom Moore of the African American Museum of Iowa in Cedar Rapids. Diedrich Doolin, Cedar Rapids NAACP and Area Substance Abuse Council of Iowa. Terry Caldwell Johnson of the Des Moines School Board. Akail Abdul Samad, State Representative and Assistant Majority Leader. Dr. Paula Mahone, MD, Maternal Fetal Medicine and Dr. Eric Johnson of Drake University. Our discussion focused on three aspects of the black community in Iowa, achievements, challenges that lie ahead, and the foundation and strengths of the community. To begin with, let's take a look at our first snapshot from the community in a report from Amelia Hamilton Morris. African Americans have a very rich history in Iowa, from George Washington Carver, whose scientific genius changed the world, to groundbreakers today in sports, politics, and business. Who are your Iowa heroes? That is the question we asked some of our leaders at the Iowa State Capitol. Um, my main Iowa hero is Jane Burleson of Fort Dodge, Iowa. She served on the city council for about 25 years. Uh, local heroes, uh, Representative Willie Glantar would be one. She was the first woman, black woman, to serve here on Capitol Hill. Preston Daniels, he served many times. And what I like about Preston, he served many years in office and never had a political problem. That's legendary to me. A lot of the women who are around me, the older women that have, who, that have come before me, a Miss Joy Lowe, a Miss Lou Porter, Lou Porter, who is president and CEO of KBBG Radio. Obviously, my mother, who had it not been for her raising eight children, there's just absolutely no way I could be here and be the success I am today. Is the civil rights movement still relevant now that Barack Obama is the president? Civil rights is and will be a huge factor uh, in our community now and forever with uh, Barack Obama as our president and if he were not or will not be our president. The, the civil rights movement is more important now than ever before, but I also want to make sure that we don't negate you know, and draw a clear line of demarcation between civil rights and human rights. Because the, the key is you can't have civil rights until you actually identify having your human rights and we're still in that struggle itself. Civil rights will continue as long as that we are all alive. And I think we have to remember we have made a lot of inroads with civil rights, but we need to continue to do that. What is the number one issue for African Americans in Iowa as we enter this new decade? The number one issue is economics for African Americans because if you don't have the money uh, to do what you need to do, you don't have the job, that means you don't have the home, that means you can't take care of your children, you don't have health care, you can't pay for education to help your child have the tools they need to be educated, um, you can't do the things that you need to expose children. And so I would say it's the economics. We're number one for incarceration of black men. We're number one for putting black kids in suspension class. We're number one in America for putting black kids in special ed classes. If we as legislators and you as Iowans don't get involved with education and work with our community leaders to keep these kids out of trouble, Iowa could be, for many, one of the worst states to live in if you're a person of color. I think it is family. I think it's 
building a strong, that strong foundation that I had when I was a child. My mom and dad were there. Nowadays, we're beginning to see that children, that families are fatherless. I think jobs is the number one issue. Uh, making sure that they have a job to sustain their families. With that snapshot from some of our African-American political leaders, let's take a look at what our panel had to say. I'm going to start with you, Mr. Nichols. Uh, my uh, hero will be George Washington Carver, and I am from Indianola, Iowa. George Washington Carver attended uh, Simpson College in Indianola, Iowa. When I talk, think in terms of uh, heroes, I certainly think in terms of heroes here in Iowa in regards to people like Edna Griffin, Evelyn Davis, uh, certainly individuals like Jim Bowman and Larry Carter and Bob Wright Sr., Renee Hardman and Sister Crawford, I could go on and on and on. The spirits, the positive spirits of Iowans and the way that they humbly go about and proudly go about the work. As I uh, think about uh, Cedar Rapids area, I uh, think of Dr. Percy Harris, who was a groundbreaker uh, for uh, housing and for uh, who became our, our, our coroner for the uh, the county, served for many years, is very uh, very active in civil rights, uh, just a tremendous role model. Mr. Doolin. Ms. Fowler Gibson, who was, who was one of the founders of uh, uh, the NWCP in Cedar Rapids, but she stood up uh, way before her time in, in 1960 to, to make sure that, that um, uh, everybody knew that uh, African-American or, or black history was important and that we need to have pride on herself. And she set a role model and example. She, she, she had the, the courage to do things when, when it was not even popular for, for African-American men to do, but definitely not popular for African-American women to do. You know, she desegregated pools. Terry Caldwell Johnson. I think about Nolden Gentry, who was one of the first African-Americans elected to the Boyne School Board. And during the time that he was on the board, he led the charge for helping to integrate and move forward the desegregation plan for Des Moines Public Schools, which I think was obviously very, very pivotal. I am very thankful to Dr. Uh, Walter Riley and to Dr. Meredith Saunders, who um, were, are physicians that practice, I think, even yet in our community. Um, and I'm very, very thankful that um, you know they paved the way for those of us who came to uh, Des Moines to Iowa later. Um, I also would. Um, want us to remember that the National Bar Association, the um, organization for black attorneys for the nation, started here in Des Moines. And I think that's a really important piece of history. Right now, what is like the most urgent issue for our community? Let me start with you, Terry. We all know the mantra from um, the United Negro College that a mine is a terrible thing to waste. And I think that um, in the final analysis, education is the single greatest opportunity for people to elevate their own personal situation and to make an impact on the world. And I think if there was a way that I could focus all of our attention and all of our work in the African American community on education, I would do that because of the impact I think it will have not only on the individual, but on the community as a whole. So I would have to land on the issue of education as being the single greatest area of focus that I would like to elevate. Dr. Paula Mahone. Well, it seems like it's hard to determine one issue. Everything um, piggybacks on the other. Um, being in health care, I'm thinking if we don't have our health, um, plans for education, um, thoughts about boosting the, bolstering the family, um, all seem for naught. And you know, in, in the health care um, Field, we are number one for just about everything that's negative and bad. Um, so I'm not sure if healthcare is number one, but it certainly is is up there. Iowa is the state that launched President Barack Obama. Now, with him in his office, in office, we have our first African American president. Some are saying we've overcome racism and that the civil rights activism is no longer needed. Uh, I would like to ask Dr. Johnson, what do you think about that? To be completely honest and frank, I think President Obama being president is concerning to me on this question. Because it leads us to think things that we shouldn't think. It, it suggests a complacency that's dangerous. The fact that we have the first African-American president doesn't change the incarceration rates that we spoke of about the state of Iowa. It doesn't change the dropout rates in the state of Iowa. It doesn't change the, the d disproportionate uh, manner in which African-American children are represent, represented in special ed. 
It doesn't change the fact that at every point along the process in the juvenile justice system, in a rape, in, a, in arrest, in incarceration, in length of time, in juvenile justice systems, there is a discrepancy at every point along the, system, along the process. And so thinking about the symbolism that President Obama's presidency means to us is absolutely important. But the work we need to do is, 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 a, is as important now it is, as it has ever been. So I think that on this issue, that concerns me. Okay. Let's ask one of our NAACP peers on the panel. Diedrich, what do you think about the Obama effect, as they are calling it? I think it's been a positive role model thing, but I think it goes back to this whole concept of quotas. If we get, you know, if you hire one black person, therefore that meets your quota, you're fine. That isn't the that isn't the goal and objective here. Just because Obama's got there, you know, we need to understand that that not everybody has those opportunities. You know, Obama did some things because of who he is and what he achieved, not simply because he's black. He's not just the black president. But I think that we need to realize that we've got a long way to go. State Representative Kale Abdul Samad, you have the final say on this question. You know, one of the things that we have to understand that when Rosa set, it started a movement. You know, when Martin marched, he did it with many other people that believed in the same, same way. When Obama ran, you know, it took a community to make that happen. For our children to fly, it now takes a community so that our children can fly. That was a great discussion, but it's time to move on to our next topic, the challenges that lie ahead for us. But first, we'll take a short break, and we'll be right back. Stay with us. This is how we do. It's I'll Make Me a World in Iowa, Iowa's African American Festival, Saturday, January 30th. Actors Boris Kojo and Greg Allen Williams headline and performing live. It's Montel Jordan, cultural exhibits and vendors, Iowa performers, and soul food at Iowa's African American Festival. Kick off Black History Month at I'll Make Me a World in Iowa, January 30th at the Polk County Convention Complex in Des Moines. Welcome back. In this segment, Voices asked African American community leaders from across the state what they see as the challenge for our community today. Amelia Hamilton Morris brings us this report. The African American community has overcome many challenges. We certainly are not strangers to adversity and struggle. As a community, we continue to move forward and make progress knowing that the road ahead will have its challenges. Statistics from the Iowa Commission on the Status of African Americans show 80.4 percent of blacks in the state have at least a high school education, 19.5 percent have bachelor's degrees, and 5.7 percent have advanced degrees. But the unemployment rate for blacks is almost three times that of the rate of whites. The black unemployment rate is 14 percent, for whites only 4.1 percent. The black population in Iowa has grown to 2.6 percent, an 85 percent increase since 1980. But the black population in Iowa State's prisons is a whopping 25 percent. With these types of stats, we ask what challenges lie ahead in the community? A state study provided to uh, the governor's African American task force um, showed that blacks in Iowa have a higher likelihood than whites of being arrested, having a case filed against them, being sentenced to prison, and also returning to prison. We have significant problems with cardiovascular disease as well as diabetes and obesity, stroke. We have a lot of problem with HIV AIDS and uh, injuries due to violence, particularly homicides. The big problem for our children right now is the epidemic of obesity. According to the Culver Administration's uh, September release on academic achievement, 